I'm Kristen. I'm with Bridging the Gap, and we're working on water conservation today. This is part of Energy Works KC, which is funded by the City of Kansas City, Missouri, and the U.S. Department of Energy. There are lots of ways that we can all cut down on our water bills and also use less energy because water uses a lot of energy. It's heavy and it takes a lot of energy to push it around and to heat it. So we'll start in the bathroom because the bathroom is where we use a lot of our water every single day. And the biggest user of water inside the house is a toilet. If you think about it, the average person flushes the toilet somewhere between five or six times a day. And depending on the age of your toilet, that can add up to a lot of water use. There's one really simple way to have your toilet use less water each time you flush, and it's familiar to a lot of us. You simply take a soda bottle like this one, filled with water with a lid on top, and you put it in the back of the tank, and every time your toilet fills back up, it uses that much less water. One of the ways that you can end up with a really high water bill is if you have a leaking toilet, which can use a couple of hundred gallons of water a day. So to make sure your toilet isn't leaking, you can do a couple of things. One is to take ordinary food coloring and put a couple of drops of it in the back of the tank and then wait a little while. If the coloring starts to come through in the bowl, you know you've got a leak. If you find out that you do have a leak, the most common culprit for a leak is the rubber gasket in the bottom of the tank. It's just a round piece of rubber that degrades over time and causes your water to leak. And you'll want to take that rubber gasket to your local hardware store so that they can match it exactly and get you a new one, which will stop your toilet from leaking. The age of your toilet makes a big difference in how much water is used every time you flush. The older your toilet is, the more water is used. And how do you know how much water your toilet is using and how new your toilet is? Well, all you have to do is lift the lid and you'll find it stamped on the underneath of the lid or inside the tank itself. If you find that your toilet was manufactured, let's say before 1980, that really is using quite a bit of water every time you flush, probably around seven gallons. So it may be time to go and look for a new toilet. And luckily there are a lot of great new models on the market. If you look for the water sense label from the EPA, you can be sure that you're getting a water thrifty toilet. If you wanna go a little bit further than that, you can get what's called a dual flush toilet, which uses less water for liquid waste and more water for solid waste. So inside the house, after the toilet, the biggest category for water use is showers and baths. And we want to make sure that we're being really thrifty inside the shower. And the first thing that you can do is purchase a low flow shower head. And they come in a lot of different formats, including this wall mount version or this version that's uh, a handheld like this. And either way, both of them have been designed to force air into the water so that you're using the same amount of force with less water. So these low flow shower heads cost anywhere from $25 to $50 or so, and you'll really recover your money pretty quickly in savings on your water bill. And if you really want to get crazy with water conservation, you can actually shut the water off while you're lathering up and shampooing and then turn it back on for your rinse. So like most ladies, I really love a hot bath, especially in the winter time. But the fact is that bathtubs use a lot of water, up to 50 gallons more than what you would use if you were to take a shower instead. So I try to use the bath only for a special treat, and if I am going to run it, I only run a very small amount of water in it. So just like with a shower head or with the kitchen faucet, we want to make sure that there's a faucet aerator on every faucet in the house. And it screws in really easily, just like so. And these cost about 50 cents or a dollar at your local hardware store. And they'll save you a lot of water over the course of a year. Another easy habit to have is to keep the water running the whole time you're brushing your teeth, which can end up actually using quite a significant amount of water, several gallons, every time you're brushing, if you brush for a good long time. So just get into the habit of putting on your toothpaste and starting to brush and immediately turning that water off until you're ready to, to rinse out again. 
One of the best ways that you can save water in the kitchen is to install one of these faucet aerators, which works just like a low flow shower head in the bathroom. As the name implies, the aerator actually forces air into the water, so you're still getting a lot of water pressure, but you're not using as much water when it's running. Be really careful about how much water you're using when you're washing dishes. First of all, you want to use the dishwasher as much as possible if you have a dishwasher because it uses a lot less water per dish than hand washing. But if you do have a dish that you want to wash, um, be sure that you're not just running the water the whole time that you're washing the dishes and letting it drain through. What you want to do is, in many cases with a large pot, just take the pot, fill it with water and have that be your actual little sink and you can do some other smaller things inside of this pot and then just do a quick rinse. So the dishwasher is one of the best friends that we have for water conservation. It doesn't use very much water per dish to clean it. To make sure that it's operating most efficiently, you want to fill it full, but not too full, so that the dishes have a chance to really get clean. Of all the uses that we have for water at home, the single biggest user of water is irrigating your lawn and garden outside. That uses up to 60% of your water use in the course of the year, and really you're only doing it for a few months. So it's a lot of water coming out of your garden hose. So one way to make sure that you're getting the maximum benefit for the water that you're using on your lawn and garden is to water in the morning when it's cooler and it won't evaporate as quickly. Here in the states of Kansas and Missouri, we have fantastic native plant species that don't use very much water at all. The grass that we're so used to on every American lawn is actually very water thirsty as well as needing to be mowed a lot. So you're really better off if you can replace as much of your grass as possible with far less uh, water intensive plants. Put in your garden a drip irrigation system. Now a drip irrigation system, instead of broadcasting water over the top of a plant, delivers a very small and thrifty amount of water at the root of the plant where it is less likely to evaporate and where the plant can get the maximum benefit from it. Rain barrels are really popular in Kansas City to capture water from your roof and there's a lot of water that comes down your roof in the course of a summer. You can capture that in a rain barrel and then just dip your little watering can right in it and go water your garden. By conserving water, you can not only help your own water bill at home, saving as much as $20 or even more than that every month, but you can also save your whole community expending energy and effort in pumping water around the city. To learn more about water conservation, a couple of the best websites include the EPA's WaterSense website, or you can go to bridgingthegap.org, your local environmental nonprofit.